Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 12, Alexander Graham Bell. Before we start reading, we're going to go over the key vocabulary words that you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first term is hearing trumpet, a cone-shaped tool that helps a person hear better by placing the small end in one ear. Our second term is visible speech, a system of communication used by deaf people in which symbols represent sounds. Our next word is symbol, an object or picture that stands for something. Our next word is inspiration, something that gives a person an idea about what to do or create. Our next word is telegraph, a tool for communicating by sending electrical signals by wire or radio. And our last word is Morse code, a way of communicating with dots and dashes using the telegraph. The first part of our reading today is chapter 10, Alexander Graham Bell, part one. What makes someone famous? Who would you think of if you were asked to name someone famous today? Would you name a famous athlete, an actor or musician? Maybe you would think of a president or famous leader. One of the most famous inventors of all time lived over a hundred years ago. His name was Alexander Graham Bell. This is Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Bell was born March 3rd, 1847. He was the middle of three sons born to Alexander and Eliza Bell of Edinburgh, Scotland. His parents nicknamed him Alec as a young boy. Alec's childhood was happy. He lived the best of both worlds by spending time at his home in the city of Edinburgh and also in the country on the weekends. More than anything, Alec loved to learn new things. At Milton Cottage near Edinburgh, young Alec enjoyed exploring nature. He collected plants and studied animals. This is his family. In school, Alec's best subjects were science and music, which he learned from his mother. Alec's mother was nearly deaf, so she played music mostly by feel. To hear the music, she would put a hearing trumpet to the strings of the instrument. The trumpet magnified the sound. Alec's father was an important speech professor. He studied the sounds of the English language, similar to the phonics you studied to learn to read. He very much wanted to help his wife Eliza and other deaf people. In 1864, he invented a sound alphabet called visible speech. He spent years coming up with symbols to stand for any sound the human voice could make. The symbols that he used look the way a person's mouth looked when making certain sounds. Visible speech helped deaf people learn how to talk better so that they could communicate with others. This is Alex's parents, Alexander and Eliza Bell. Do you see the hearing trumpet that Mrs. Bell is using to listen to her granddaughter? A visible speech poster showing the symbols invented by Alec's father to help the deaf. The example of both his mother and father was an inspiration for Alec. He became interested in inventing things on his own. He especially wanted to invent things to help other people. Alec and his brother actually made a speaking machine. The machine used the voice box or larynx of a dead sheep. Part of the machine acted like a mouth and throat and could say the word mama. As an adult, Alec worked with deaf students. He later took a job as a professor at Boston University. Inventing things was a big part of Alec's life. After one invention, he set his mind on others, never satisfied with the past invention. The invention that he is most famous for, however, was yet to come. We are now moving on to chapter 11, Alexander Graham Bell, part two. Alec Bell loved thinking of new things to invent more than anything else in the world, especially to help other people. In 1837, another inventor, Samuel Morse, created a machine called the telegraph. The telegraph was a way to send messages long distances across wires. It was limited to dots and dashes and could not transmit human sounds. Alec began to think about ways that he might improve upon this new invention. I used to tell my friends that one day we should speak by telegraph, said Bell. He devoted all his time to this new goal. So did many others, and the race for a new invention was on. With the invention of the telegraph by Samuel Morse, people could send messages long distances. A system of dots and dashes called Morse code was used to tap out the messages on the telegraph. Three dots followed by three dashes followed by three more dots stands for SOS, code for help. Boston, Massachusetts became an important place for many inventors. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, made space in one of its labs for Alec to do his experiments. His days were filled with teaching and then trying over and over to make human sound travel across a wire. 
all of his energy was spent on this creative idea. He wrote his idea of using electric current to carry a sound would most likely make others think him crazy. So he kept most of his ideas and experiments secret. Elk hired a young mechanic to help him. Thomas Watson knew how electricity worked. At first, their experiments failed more than they succeeded. Alec thought they were getting closer to success. I think the transmission of the human voice is much more nearly at hand than I thought. On June 2nd, 1875, his dreams came true. Like many inventions, an accident led to an important discovery. With the electricity turned off, Watson sent a message to Alec that Alec could hear. He heard tones, not just one single pitch sound. He knew instantly it was a huge step forward. I have, by accident, made a discovery of the greatest importance, wrote Bell. Three days later, the first telephone recorded, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. To Bell's great joy, Watson had heard and understood what Bell had said. Fame and fortune came to Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Watson. They soon formed the Bell Telephone Company to make and sell their new invention. This is a picture of Bell's first telephone. Bell continued to invent the rest of his life. Self-education is a lifelong affair, said Bell. There is no failed experiment, he said, to convince people to keep going with their ideas. He passed his love of learning on to his grandchildren and inspired a whole group of new inventors. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 12, Google Form.